What's up, metal and heavy music fans? It's Flight of Icarus again with MetalTrenches.com, and today we are ranking the albums of Aborted. And hey, if you like to be kept up to date with the best and brightest metal bands and albums from the underground and above, then stick with me by hitting that subscribe button down below. All right, aborted tier list, death metal. Let's get right into it. And we're going to start all the way back in 1999 with the purity of perversion. And I got to say, I forget sometimes how long this band has been around. Like, it's it's kind of crazy to think about it. But anyways, cool to see them start out right from the beginning with the horror samples and song titles. Just pure, brutal death metal, clearly inspired by the likes of Cannibal Corpse at this point. Not much of an identity yet, with Sven mostly braying his way through this thing. Some carcassy riffs on the Lament configuration, like the Hellraiser reference there. Not bad, but nothing really jumps out at me either. Just very average stuff. I'm going to put it at D tier only to help differentiate too between the, the levels of quality here. I'd say if I were just grading it on its own, it'd probably be more of like a C, C minus. But yeah, I want to make sure we space some of these things out. Next, we have Engineering the Dead in 2001. Pretty similar thoughts on this one. Some decent riffs throughout. Solid opener too. The title track Sphinctral <laughs> Enthrallment is pretty good. Speaking of which, the titles are getting spicier at this point, some of which I probably can't even say on this video without getting in trouble. I'd say this is a slight improvement, but still same tier. I'm going to put it at the head of D. All right, Gormageddon, The Saw and the Carnage Done, 2003. Reference to the Neil Young song, The Needle and the Damage Done, which is a Great song, by the way. That grindy opening track really makes a statement, and I am hearing a significant step forwards in the instrumentation with this one, with that razor-sharp focus on battering speed that I've come to love about this band. Uh, we've got basically an all-new lineup, which is kind of the case with most of these early albums. I'll say more on that later. But yeah, Sven is the only consistent member for quite a while here. But we've got Dirk of Soilwork and Mortuary, among other things, and let me just say, he fucks shit up on this album. Sven, ironically, still kind of the least interesting thing about this album. He's getting better and starting to come into his own in terms of what he's going to become as a vocalist, but still not quite there yet. But great solos, really great drumming, pretty sick cover of Carcass's Carnal Forge, too, that knocked me on my ass. I didn't really think anyone but Carcass could do Carcass, but it, it is a solid one. I'd say that re-listening to them in order, this was actually the first album where I really actually started enjoying myself. I'm going to put this one at B tier. All right, then we have The Archaic Abattoir in 2005, another total lineup overhaul, leading to a less grindy album with some groovier sections. Blood Fixing the Bled even has some kind of like every time I die sounding riffs which is interesting there's a lot of like that kind of southern dirtbag bluesy flair to it this has its high points like the gangrenous epitaph but ultimately ends up feeling very disjointed to me especially when compared to the razor sharp focus of the previous album so this one was a step back to C tier with you. All right, Slaughter and Apparatus, a methodical overture in 2007. All right, next drummer up on the chopping block is David Haley from Psychroptic. And also, notably, Jeffrey Walker of Carcass is listed as additional personnel as this album. And speaking of which, the Condren Enigma is a solid opener with very Carcass vibes, and I hear it on other tracks as well. Ingenuity and Genocide is another standout. Better fusion here of the groove and melodic elements with the faster parts. Tracks like Avinius, Odious Emanation, Underneath, Rorulent Soil, and The Fool Nucleus of Resurrection. Man, they really <laughs> make me work for saying some of these titles. Show them finally flexing more, they're more like atmospheric side, and their sound that I enjoy so much about their later albums. So we're kind of first seeing this come to the forefront here. Not perfect, but overall, I really dig the steps forward on this one. And it's a clever take also on Faith No More's Surprise You're Dead as the bonus track here. I'm going to give this one a B tier and even probably a little bit higher than this one. All right, Strict 9, 213 in 2008. I was pretty hyped after listening to the last one. I was like, okay, here's where we like really start seeing the pendulum swing 
in the proper direction, but unfortunately many of these songs feel like a significant step backwards to me. It's very back to basics death metal. You don't get any of those like atmospheric elements we had on the previous album. Even Sven's vocals feel less varied in comparison. There are a few solid bangers. Pestiferous Subterfuge in particular stands out. The bass guitar on this thing too from Sven Jensen. It sounds great. But yeah, this is an interesting discography because again, each album is very nearly like a completely different band. So it's really a crapshoot in terms of whether the next album is going to be good or terrible or just somewhere in the middle, as opposed to like a gradual maturation and evolution of sound that we see with most bands. This is probably the only time too where I'd say that even the cover, which in this case is for Pantera, kind of sucks. I'm going to give this one a C tier. I could honestly almost give it a D tier, but it's probably a little bit better than these. All right, but then in 2012, we get global flatline and here we fucking go <laughs> we are now entering the golden age of aborted's discography if you ask me sven's delivery the mix of brutality and atmosphere and the stepped up production all here in spades we also finally get another present day member here with ken bedin joining on drums lots of banger tracks here the title track, The Origin of Disease, The Calendar Theory, Vermicular Obscene Obese, which features a great guest spot from Trevor of the Black Dahlia Murder. Lots of other great guest spots, too, including members of Misery Index, Rotten Sound, and Benighted. And get used to seeing Julian <laughs> make an appearance on most of their albums from here on out. Coronary Reconstruction, which <laughs> was really difficult for me to say, took a couple takes, has some wailing guitars on it. Lots of killer solos and great hooks in general. Very consistent album. I'm going to put this as their first S tier. Excellent stuff. All right, the Necrotic Manifesto 2014. Mighty Mendel stepping in on guitar for the next few albums. Very much enjoy him and his solo material as well. Guest appearances here from members of the Acacia Strain and Wormed. More killer songs. The title track just destroys every time. Great sample opening your entitlement means nothing, which is perfectly suited to this band. Coffin Upon Coffin is like an At The Gates track on steroids. The slower moments are really great too, like the squealy guitars on Die Witz Weiflung, which has this kind of behemoth demigod energy. Cenobites is super epic with its death clock harmonies. And then a Converge Concubine death metal cover. Yes, please. I don't think it's quite as good as Global Flatline as a whole, but it's damn close, so I'm going to put this one at A tier. All right, Retro Gore 2016, wall-to-wall -wall bangers on this album. I love everything about it. It's great enough on its own, but further amplified by more guest spots from members of Revocation, Benighted Again, Origin, and fucking Cattle Decapitation. Personal favorites, the title track, Cadaverous Collection, Terminal Redux, and Divide Impediment. Great scream-along moments, too, that really stick in your brain and are awesome for those, like, crowd interaction moments at shows. Just plain Great time, very fun. We're entering my favorite era of their album artwork as well. I think it's among their best and several critics seem to agree at the time. This is another S tier. I'm gonna put it at the front of S tier actually. All right, Terror Vision 2018, a really solid follow-up to an already like critically lauded album, similar vein to lots of high points, Vespertine Decay, Visceral Despondency, Deep Red, love the reference to Argento there, Exquisite Carnivorous Drama, The Final Absolution, lots of killer solos too, and other little surprises sprinkled throughout, excellent riffing, tons of hooks, Deep Red, again in particular, Particular, that one is just a rager. Also some more great guest vocals here from members of Septic Flesh, Cytotoxin, and again, Benighted. Similar vibe overall, but not quite as good, I would say. Something about it just didn't connect with me as readily and quickly. And I just like between the two, if I were deciding which one I wanted to listen to, it's going to be retro gore most of the time. So I'm going to put this one at the top of a tier just below that all right and then we have mania cults 2021 this album opens with the moodiest most serious sounding intro i think of 
everything that's come before, and it's a pretty fair signal of what's to come on this one. Aborted have never shied away from serious topics, but it's always felt like they did so in this kind of like tongue-in-cheek kind of way, but with Mania Cult, much of that seems stripped away in favor of something a little bit more earnest and real. There's also a very like mournful Bioshock-esque sounding piano interlude, Verbulgen, and even undoubtedly heavy tracks like Drag Me to Hell just carry this extra sense of gravitas to it. I think that within the context of when this album was written, written and recorded, it probably makes sense. Personally, I think that silliness and escapism is actually what I look for the most right now, more than ever. But that said, Mania Cult doesn't come off as like pretentious or boring at all, and I think they've pulled this off really well, and it does still have its moments like Dementophobia that still has some of that old energy. Musically, the album is definitely among their strongest. Songs are largely short to the point and often left me wanting more rather than waiting for them to end, as was the case with some of the earlier albums when I was going through re-listening. Ceremonial and Aptitude, just for instance, and so abruptly that I actually had a like, wait, that's it kind of moment, which I think is great. Like that's kind of what you want from your audience. It's like, wait, no, I want more. The longest tracks are still only around like five minutes and they managed to pack a ton of incredible atmosphere and plenty of change-ups too, to keep these interesting. The closing track in particular does a great job of ending things on a high dramatic note. And so to sum up, I do miss some of the winks and nods that made retro gore so entertaining and re-listenable, but it also feels like this is arguably their most focused, consistent, and mature work to date, I would say. So I'm going to give this thing an A alongside Terror Vision, probably just after it, but uh, we'll see after it's had more time to sink in how I feel. But now it's your turn. Let me know how you would rank the aborted discography in the comments and also check out my tier list playlist for more of these. In particular, if you like aborted, you'll probably be most interested in the videos for the Black Dahlia murder and maybe Dying Fetus. But that'll do it for now. Flight of Icarus signing off. I will see you in the trenches.